Christopher Reynolds wrote a book called What a Capital Idea, History of Australia, 1770 to 1901. I met him at Burley last week. Come and meet him. I'm talking to Christopher Reynolds. Christopher, you're an author? Yes, I've just finished a new book, What a Capital Idea, Australia. What a Capital Idea sounds like very English. What a well, it does. I say, actually, that's where it comes from. I say, from. what a capital I, idea. I, uh, in writing up the book, I actually got into the lounge room of the Prime Minister and his four friends as they discussed the, the Australian venture. And as I read through the discussion, I could just hear one of them say, oh, what a capital idea. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's a, just a great topic, especially since Australia became Britain's greatest commercial accident. So I'd say it's a play on words because Australia returned three times the wealth of Canada to Britain. It became Australia, Britain's greatest commercial accident. The sheep and the gold, at one stage we were exporting 40% of the world's gold was going back to Britain. But you're right, the amount of money that came out of Australia from wool as well as mining was just phenomenal. Tell me about Christopher Reynolds. Are you an author or is this a one-off? Uh, no, I've written a series of children's books as well, um, for poultry books to try and help children with literacy. And I have another book called In the Shadow of the Crown, which I did several years ago. And it's a rewrite of the Australian Constitution in order that we might, if we ever did, um, how Republican government should actually be formed in this country. The book is about what? Well, it's a, it's um, Australian history from 1770 to 1901. And it started out with a, with a, a publishing company saying they needed a book for, uh, for primary school, Australian history. And I said, well, it's been a couple of years. Let me redo the research. So five years later, I've come up with this incredible work. But I, I started out by saying, well, you know, what's the context? Why did they bother to come to Australia? So it takes four chapters before anybody's getting on a boat to come to Australia. So I got in behind what was happening. I got original documents and diaries, legislation and even newspaper reports to put together the story as it has never been told before. I noticed William Dampier. He's always fascinated me, William Dampier, because he... He was around here, wasn't he? Yes. And he was one of a number of people that came up, uh, particularly the Western Australian coast. But I think it's one of the greatest stories I ever read of this man who actually circumnavigated the world three times while everybody else was sort of frightened that they were going to fall off the edge of the earth. And this was in the, in the um, 1690s and 95. The phenomenal story that I just couldn't help but write up. It ended up with him being um, sponsored to go off and be a pirate and to, to take on the Spanish ships. But he knocked over the Spanish galleon and got away with $40 million worth of gold. But when he got home, the gold had disappeared and the company that sponsored him were having an absolute fit. And I wrote it up on a post and put it on, uh, put it on my website and had this old sea captain tell his nephew about the story of William Dampier. And the young fellow said, but, but what happened to the gold? He said, well, he said, he did what all pirates did. He buried it. And so the story of Treasure Island comes out of Dampier, as did uh, Robinson Crusoe and Gulliver's Travels all came out of this one man's incredible journeys around the world. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to go back and talk to William Dampier? He started off just on a merchant ship and ended up in the Caribbean and was working with some famous pirates and uh, they were doing um, big jobs on the on the Spanish etc but they came around into the Pacific just for the sake of it decided that they're going to travel west and got to the Philippines and a uh, fellow I think his name was Juan decided he was going to stay there and the rest went on but there's a terrific story about how they were coming down the west coast of Australia and he was mapping it and a, a great storm came up and it went for 12 days or in these massive waves in the darkness and the ship ended up on the north of Sumatra so the crew had had enough of him and they just put him off again it's the second time he'd been marooned he was on the north of Sumatra I ran into this fellow that was covered in tattoos and he thought I'm taking you back to London but he but to get out of Sumatra he had to sm get smuggled onto a ship because the British East India Company wanted him to stay there and work. So he got himself onto the ship and back to England and took the fellow with the tattoos with him. And uh, while he was stony broke again, he then put on a show with the fellow with the tattoos and, and published his first set of books, which became incredibly important for Captain Cook and so many other people that um, wanted to know about the coast of Australia. Anyway, you're going to love it if you pick it up and have a read. Good on you, Christopher. Nice to meet you. Christopher Reynolds, who I met at Burley, author of History of Australia, 1770 to 1901. It's called What a Capital Idea.